Hello, I'm Karan Demijan, intern here at the AAA National Office and the editor of Australian Outlook. Today with us we have uh, Matthew Newhouse, who's currently the first assistant, assistant secretary of the Middle East and Africa Division at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, and was previously the ambassador to Zimbabwe, and has also held numerous other positions in the region. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Um, your area of work and expertise focuses on the African region. What are some of the developments you've been actively following over the past few years? And, you think are of importance of concern and we should notice? Well, I think the most positive thing in Africa has been um, its rising economy and it, the growth of democracy across the continent. And Australia is very engaged there. We've invested considerably in the mining industry and we see it as a continent, uh, a continent of opportunity. Many challenges still, but real opportunities. Wonderful. Um, what, Adding on that, what do you think are some of the misconceptions that the international community has about the the continent of Africa and the region, taking into account the diversity of the countries that do comprise of it. Well, I'm glad you mentioned diversity because it's 54 different countries, almost all of them at different stages of development. And uh, so within that, there's quite a lot of um, difference. But unfortunately, in the media images, it tends to concentrate on conflict situations like in South Sudan, on famine, and not look at some of the um, growing much more democratic, much more economically developed uh, countries that are emerging on the continent. And what, what are some of those countries that you think are very strong economically? And well, clearly South Africa is still a bedrock. Now, it's facing some governance challenges at the moment, but um, it's made a great difference. And we forget sometimes that whole struggle against apartheid, which comes out in this book of um, David Coltarts that made such a difference to that country and its impact on the continent. And that's a really positive story which Australia played quite a role in. Um, you see countries like Kenya going through elections at the moment. You know, some tension around that. I've been in several Kenyan elections, but I'm pretty optimistic and that's a very strong economy. You see countries like Ethiopia facing many challenges, but rebuilding itself um, and economically much stronger. Over in the West, amazing elections in Ghana recently, which is uh, quite a leader on the African continent. We've just opened a post in Rabat in Morocco, which is a really dynamic uh, country in the region. So I just point to those um, individual examples. Um, how has Australia, Australia and the wider international community community's work in the region being able to achieve um, some good outcomes um, and what are some of the challenges that countries and the international community faces in its work in the region? Yeah well alongside the economic engagement of course Australia's always had quite an active role in development engagement and particularly humanitarian assistance which is ne needed when you do have situations like we've seen in South Sudan and Somalia. Um, the thing that often people don't realize is now the diaspora links we have, you know. The Africans in Australia are now numbering some half a million. We have our first black African um, senator, um, Lucy Kachui, but she's not the only parliamentarian born in Africa. There's others born in Egypt and South Africa. So that just underlines some of the people-to-people -people links, which are building a whole range of links, including cultural links, uh, now, education links are very strong. So it's a, it's a continent that Australia is more and more engaged with. Um, you talked about the diaspora, but there's also, um, Australia itself is reassessing its foreign policy with the white paper do sure. soon. Um, how do you see Australia's approach changing in the future? And what are some of the things that Australia can do yeah. uh, more so to um, expand its engagement with the region? I'm not so not sure that the approach is changing, but we are also responding to current situations. I mean, one thing, and it's very much in the Middle East and Africa area, we have to address is violent extremism. And uh, that is impacting on us here. And that's uh, probably a newer challenge in the foreign policy space in the last couple of uh, decades. But I think in the white paper context, it's clear that there's going to be both an Indo-Pacific focus, which is appropriate for where we are in the world, but also a sense that we are a G20 country with global reach. And so we do have global interests. We see it when we're running in multilateral campaigns or when we're trying to uh, do our bit in climate change negotiations. So I think the white paper will wrap up all those issues. Thanks so much for joining us. Ambassador Newhouse. Thank you very much.
For more, please uh, visit our YouTube channel, AWI Vision, and subscribe to our uh, blog, Australian Outlook. Thank you.